This section will show you how to configure the CVX series machine vision controller to connect over Ethernet IP. Uh, as you can see here, I'm currently connected to a CVX series controller using our vision terminal software, but you can also set this up directly on the controller using a mouse and a connected monitor. Um, the first step in the Ethernet IP setup is under the global settings. You need to set up the CVX controller to have the correct IP address. So this is done under global, communications IO, and network. So this is where you can set the fixed IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway. Now these settings will vary depending on your setup, whether you're going over a network or connected directly one-to-one. -one. In our example here, we're just going to use the default address, 192.168.0.10. To enable the Ethernet IP uh, settings, you need to also go under the global menu here, Communications I.O., and Ethernet IP. Simply need to check the box to enable the Ethernet IP setting here, and this will enable the communication. The data size is automatically set. You normally don't need to change this, but you can set the size. Uh, you can lower that if need be, or set the different size of the data. But normally, you don't need to change that. If you need to, if you're connecting to an SLC or a MicroLogix type PLC, you can check this box. But really, the only thing that it changes is this data size. It lowers it down. Um, under data configurations, you can click set. If you want to view the data allocation list, you can just sit, click View List, and this will show you uh, all the different I.O. Uh, mapping that's done over Ethernet IP. So as you can see, here is, the, here is the input side to the CVX, triggers and everything. On the output side, or the send data side, uh, the only thing that's really changeable here is the command response output area. Uh, you can lower this amount. Uh, it's set for 24 bytes, and it, if you need more result output area. Um, so lowering that will give you more result output data. But normally you can just leave this default. And again, if you want to view the data mapping list, you can click View List and scroll through and see the different bits and uh, byte areas uh, that's allocated for Ethernet IP. Uh, process priority, that just dictates what has priority. Uh, inspection uh, takes priority over transmission of data or if data has the priority. In other words, when there's a backlog of, backlog of data, do you want the uh, system to pause and wait for open space in the buffer, or do you want the processing to continue and just skip data if the buffer fills? So that's what that setting is. And then you can enable or disable the handshaking here if you want to use that function when you're outputting data. Um, finally, this is also in this same menu is where you can create the EDS file. If you're doing this directly on the controller, you click this button and it will save it to SD2 card. So you need an SD2 card to do this if you're going to do this on the controller. And it will create an EDS folder inside the CVX folder and that will contain the EDS file needed when you want to import the EDS file into the Allen Bradley software or uh, other software that you're using. Um, you can also do this via the simulator if you're using our CVX Vision simulator software. Uh, right in the simulator you come to the same menu and uh, click the same button and it will create the file to the workspace and you can use it that method as well. Simply click OK, and uh, once you make these changes, it's going to ask for you to save and reboot. So go ahead and click Save and Reboot, and we'll let the controller reboot, and we'll continue our settings. Once you have your Ethernet IP communication enabled and uh, all set, you can now set up the program to output the data items that you want. In this example, we just got a simple position adjustment tool set up uh, and a simple pixel counting tool that we'll use for this example. And uh, I'll show you how to output some of these results. So to output some of these results over Ethernet IP, just simply click the output menu and then go to Ethernet IP section here. The bit allocation area, this is the status bit, so the pass-fail stuff. So if you want to output uh, your tool results, your camera judgments, things like that, you can simply add these to the list. Just click the, uh, the bit number, choose camera status, uh, total status, or if you want to choose individual tool judgments, you can just click Tool Judgment and then uh, click the appropriate tool, as you can see here. So you can pick and choose the tool judgments that you want. So these are the simple OK, no goods. And you can choose if you want uh, to be tur turn on or be a 1 for OK or turn on or be a 1 for no good. So you have that choice as well over here to the right. So these are all your, like I said, your pass-fail judgments. You have 64 of these that you can set up. And then the byte allocation area is the measured results area, like X values, Y values, uh, pixel counts, etc. So to add stuff to this list, you simply come to this uh, tab here and click Select Data. Choose the tool that you want to pick data from, and then scroll through the list here and pick the data item that you want. In this example, we're going to output the X, Y position and the angle result from this pattern tool. So we'll choose the judge label there, and say we want to output the match percentage as well. We'll go ahead and choose that. 
And then maybe for this uh, pixel counting tool, we'll go ahead and I'll put that area count or the pixel count. So you just add to this list the items that you want, and these will be output in order to the PLC side uh, on the Ethernet IP connection. Just simply click OK. You'll see a, a review here. It'll show you the data address and the items that you've selected. Uh, one additional setting here is result output as skip tool. So if you're using execute, execute conditions and things like that, if you don't want anything to be output for that tool, if it's skipped, you can choose none. Otherwise, it'll output a zero if a tool is not executed. And that's really it for this setting. Just click OK. Uh, uh, to actually output data, you need to be in run mode for the vision system. So when you're ready to go, you just simply click run mode, save your changes, and then you can run your program. This section of the video will show you how to import the EDS file from the CVX series machine vision controller into the Allen Bradley software or your RLS Logic software and uh, create the Ethernet module. Uh, before I get in there, let me just show you on the desktop here, I already have my EDS file created. Uh, again, that's created via the controller or the CVX simulator software. Um, I also have a CSV file with the tag descriptions that I'll load in once we create our module. Um, if you don't have any of these files or have trouble finding them, just let Keyance Vision Support know and we can get these files to you. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new project for my Studio 5000 software here. And uh, what we'll do is we'll just call this CVX. So CVX is what we'll call this and we'll click Next. So just configure your modules and stuff. The settings will change depending on your PLC attachment. Um, as you can see, here's the type of controller we have, uh, Compact Logix controller. And uh, I'm going to use the latest version, version 24. And let's go ahead and click Finish. So that'll start. That'll create the new job in the software, and then we can start the uh, next process of importing the EDS and creating the Ethernet module and such. Okay, so our new job has been created in the Allen Bradley software here. So to import the EDS file, this is done under the Tools menu. And you need version 20 or higher to be able to do this. But uh, under Tools menu, you can simply select EDS Hardware Installation Tool. Go ahead and click on that. And what that, do, that will do is open up the import menu here, as you'll see in a second here. Uh, just make sure you have the EDS file ready that you want to um, import. And uh, just follow the steps here. So here we go. So just simply click Next. We're going to register an EDS file, or you can see the other options here, but we're, this will register a new one. So you just simply click Next, and uh, we'll register a single file. So what you'll do is you'll browse and point to the path that contains the file here. So if you remember on the desktop here, I have a folder. I already have it uh, created here for the CVX. This, in this example, it's the CVX 200 series controller. So I'm going to go ahead and click Open. You go ahead and click Next. Click Next again. You'll see it if it, there's an icon available, it loaded in the icon for that uh, controller. Just simply click Next, and then we'll click Next again. So and that's really it. Click Finish. So that's how you import the EDS file itself. And you can continue that for if you have the other, other controllers like XG or CVX100. Uh, once the EDS has been added, you can now create the new Ethernet module in the system here. So uh, as you can see, I already, already set up my appropriate Ethernet path to the PLC. So under the Ethernet menu here, you just simply click New Module. And this will bring up the module type. What you can do is under Catalog here, you can actually search uh, by vendor name. As you can see here, if I shoot, shoot, search by Keyance, it shows up that way, or CVX. So once the EDS has been imported, you can just search for it, and it'll locate it on the, you can locate it in the Catalog menu here. Um, you can also select it and add it to your favorites. So on your Favorites tab, you can add your favorite modules, and it'll automatically be added here. So once you have... Uh, find the module that you want, you simply select select it and click Create. So we're going to go ahead and create a new Ethernet module here. We're going to go ahead and give it a name. And I'm going to call it CV underscore X 200. And that name, the reason I'm giving it that name is um, when I import the tag description files, that's the name I need to give it. You can always change it at a later time, but uh, that's what we're going to call it for now. And uh, you can give it a description if you want. going to call it the CVX series controller. And uh, here's where you're going to put the IP address. And this is the IP address of the controller. 
Um, and this depends on what you set it at. In this example, um, we've, we're going to use the default address, which is 192.168.0.10. So that's the IP address of the CVX controller itself. Um, and you, if you click down here to change, this is where you can configure the data type. So you can see the input and output uh, size is all set here automatically. Uh, as a default, it's set for SINT, which is single integer. But what we want, uh, what works best is uh, in our set in the setup here for CVX or XG, is a double integer DINT. So because most of the output data's results are 32-point uh, uh, values, so it's easiest just to choose DINT at this point. Um, so click, so choose DINT and just click OK. Apply the changes. And uh, under the connection tab, you could set your appropriate RPI or requested packet interval here. I'm just going to use the default settings. And that's really about the, that's it for the setup. So click OK. You can see the module has been added to the uh, Ethernet section here. If you go to controller tags, double click on that, you can see the module has been added. Uh, but it's just generic module. There's no description for the uh, item, so it's just a generic allocation. There's no, there's no labels or anything like that, but we can uh, import that in quite easily, as I'll show you in a minute. Um, you can see when you import the EDS, it also adds an additional Boolean uh, tag here called connection faulted. So if the connection faults, you have a nice little bit automatically set for that. So what we can do is, uh, if you have that just tag description file, and again, if you do not have this file, just let Keyins Tech Support know. We can send this to you. But again, under the Tools menu, we can import the tags comment file. So what we can do is I can go back to the desktop. That file that I have here, Ethernet uh, tag descriptions, I can go ahead and import that in. And it automatically populates the descriptions as you can see here. So everything that all the data mapping that's uh, preset ahead of time is now described here quite easily and we can easily see what's going on here. So when you're ready, uh, if that's all the changes you need to make, you simply can download this uh, program or this module to the PLC. Of course you do any other programming that you need to do, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and download this now. And once this is downloaded and the PLC is in run mode, uh, as long as you've configured the CVX already uh, to be enabled, which we have done, you can confirm the connection. So I'm going to put that to remote run mode. So I'm going to go back here. I got my CVX here. Uh, it's connected via remote desktop again via using our vision terminal software. So this is the actual CVX itself. I'm going to uh, just confirm communication. So if I go to utility, uh, there's an Ethernet monitor here, Ethernet IP monitor that I can check on and confirm. And you can see here I do indeed have connection here. Uh, communication status connected. Um, I'm using the, again, Control Logics PLC, comp uh, also Compact Logics can use uh, what's called cyclic communication. So if you're using the cyclic communication, you you'll see the connected here. Uh, if you're using MicroLogix or SLC, which doesn't use the cyclic communication, you won't see the connected here because that uses message communication. But you can see here I definitely have my connection and we are connected. Once you have your PLC module all configured and the CVX all configured for Ethernet IP, you can confirm uh, the, all the communications that are going on with the Ethernet IP. So you can see here I got my uh, program running. Uh, I'm connected to the CVX here again through our vision terminal. Uh, if you go to the utility menu, you can actually view the Ethernet IP monitor while the system's running. So if you want to confirm communication while the system's running, just simply come to this uh, Ethernet IP memory monitor. You can view all the incoming items from the PLC, the bits and the command parameters, etc. But you can also view the output data here. So if I come in here, you can see all the bit level stuff on and off. If it's on, it's got a check mark, and then all the result data stuff. So you can view the data in hexadecimal if you want, or as a decimal, signed decimal or unsigned. So you choose the type, how you want it displayed, and you can see it here. And you can watch this real time. So if I manually trigger this here a couple times, you can see the data is updating. And it's showing you what should be outputting to the PLC side. So if I confirm on the PLC side, you can see the data matches up. Here's result data one, two, three, etc., and all the other bit level stuff. If you want to go look at that kind of stuff, you can scroll through and view all the different tags. So you can monitor the tags real time. So I'll show you. If I t trigger the system here, you can see the values are updating live. Um, if you're using handshaking, then you need to use the handshaking signals. But if you don't have sh handshaking enabled, the data is automatically output every time the system is triggered. Uh, also, um, 
for data to be output, you need to be in run mode on the CVX. So if you're not in run mode, the data is not being output. So it only outputs the result data while you're in run mode. Now, if you go to setup mode on the CVX, uh, I'm going to confirm here. I'll show you in the output menu here under Ethernet IP. Again, this is just a review. Here's the bit level stuff. This is all your judgment stuff. And then here's your byte level stuff that we've already set up. So this is basically result data one, result data two, three, four, five, et cetera. So everything you add to the list just automatically gets output in that order. Um, but another thing you can do while you're in setup mode on the CVX is I can go back to that utility and the Ethernet IP monitor. Again, I can monitor the status of any kind of incoming bits from the PLC or values. And I can also go to the output section here. Now what I can do here is when you're in setup mode is you can actually click this manual output uh, checkbox here. And I can manually check mark and force on stuff. So to confirm on the PLC side uh, if it's coming on. So I'll check these. And if you want it, you can actually output uh, numbers too. So command result, for example, here. I'll go ahead and put in a number one, two, three, four or two, three, four. <laughs> so you can put a number in here just manually. And on the PLC side, you can come over here and confirm if it's coming across correctly and if it's coming in the correct data location. So you can see here, command result, I got my two, three, four. And if you go to the bit level stuff, you can scroll around and find here's those ready one, two, and three. So again, just kind of a nice way of testing communication. So in setup mode, you can do this manual output. If you're in run mode, you can view the communication. You just can't do this manual output. Um, that's it. Again, uh, data is output only in run mode, so make sure you're in run mode when you want to actually run the system and output data.